And so we're recording, hi. So um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Patricia Newton. And I am I'm glad to welcome everybody here um, as a representative of the Trinity Episcopal, um, Trinity Episcopal Labyrinth Guild. Now, amazingly, over 20 years ago, this guild was started. And there are many people on the phone here tonight that actually were here when it started or, and worked on it for many years. And for all of those 20 years, Trinity has done a monthly walk um, uh, in their beautiful cathedral. And when, the, when it started with the um, pandemic, we came, became virtual and started to do monthly labyrinth walks on Zoom, which we're gonna to continue to do every month um, um, on the third Monday. That'll be next Monday. But in addition, we started this wonderful speakers bureau and we're so happy that Denny's gonna be our first speaker. And we did this because as I was thinking about it today, we did it out of a belief that being on a path, however circuitous, however labyrinthian it is, that takes one to the center of one's being is a good path these days of chaos. So that we're hoping to create experiences that help people follow Mm -hmm. Somebody's muting me. Okay, um, this um, um, because if being in a hanging out in that center where one gets nourished, Jean Houston, who really was a person who really promoted the labyrinth, the modern labyrinth, really says that is from this center, from this place in the center where you're being that um, that the answers to all these confusing and difficult questions will come from. And so that's our purpose is to create a place where people can be in the center. And I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully this comes up because here is a picture of our beautiful labyrinth and Trinity that we miss. And I'd very much like to thank um, Trinity Episcopal Cathedral and the um, and spiritual formation and the number of people there that really helped us do all of the nitty gritty work that does this. The guild, um, um, I'd like to thank everybody on the guild. We're all volunteers. Um, so that since we're all volunteers, we can kind of um, speak to our imperfections. Um, but we've been working very hard to bring this to you and I'm very thankful for everybody that's put in time. And I'd also like to thank Labyrinth Network Northwest, um, Kay and Grace, who have um, spent a lot of time getting out the word. Um, and down here for the upcoming events, this is the website. We're also gonna have it um, in chat but this is the Trinity Episcopal Labyrinth um, workshop, I mean, website. And the, um, all the upcoming events, the monthly walks, the Speakers Bureau will be on um, there. And so that you can go there to look at it. Plus you'll be getting um, more emails from me than, um, than you might want. So I'm gonna stop now and I'm gonna pass to um, Heidi Franklin after I do this very nice, I'm so glad that everybody is here and it feels such a good thing to be creating a community together to explore the center. So I'm going to go to Heidi here. There she is. Hi everybody. Welcome, like Patricia said, welcome. We're so glad you're here with us this evening for the very first event in our Trinity Episcopal Cathedral's Labyrinth Speakers Bureau series featuring Denny Dyke of Circles in the Sand. And I have a few housekeeping details that I wanted to go over first before we begin. 
We will be recording this session, but only the event speakers will be recorded, not the members of the audience. So you don't need to worry about that. And after I'm done speaking, I'm gonna hand things over to Sandra Grace Walden, who will help get us centered and introduce Denny. And then after Denny shares with us, Sandra will lead us on a guided finger labyrinth walk. And while Sandra and Denny are speaking and while we're doing the guided meditation on the labyrinth, please remember to keep your microphones muted. And following the labyrinth walk, we'll take some time to share our experiences on the labyrinth. And then there'll be a question and answer session with Denny. And you can unmute your microphones as we come out of the labyrinth walk. For the question and answer session, there's a few different ways you can ask a question of Denny. Um, you can put your question in the chat. Um, so you can just type it in the chat box. Um, you can raise your hand the old fashioned way this way, or you can click the raise hand button uh, on Zoom. And there's a couple different ways to do that. I'll just go over them really quickly. If, if anyone needs help, just send me a message or, or, we, or we can help you with that. Um, on your desktop, at the very bottom of your screen, if you hover your cursor over the bottom of your screen, there will be a button called participants. If you click on the participants button, then a panel will open on the right hand side and there will be a um, icon to raise your hand. You can click raise hand and that'll do that for you. If you're on a phone, you can click the three dots um, above the more button at the bottom of your screen and click the raise hand feature there. If you're on a tablet, um, you can click more in the toolbar that displays at the top of your screen and choose the raise hand feature. So, but if all else fails, just go ahead and raise your hand and we, we will see you and we will call on you. So that is all I had. I am gonna turn things over to Sandra Grace Walden to get us started. Sandra? Well, I'm just gonna jump right on board and say welcome. <laughs> <laughs> As everyone else um, already said, we're so glad that you're here tonight. And I know that you've come to see Denny Dyke, who um, has agreed to be with us to answer some questions and to show us some of his incredible work. Denny was drawn to the sand on the beautiful beach in Bandon about six years ago. With time and retirement, a long stick and the inspiration, he started to draw labyrinths in the sand. As founder and the guiding light of Circles in the Sand, he and the team that he's surrounded himself with have created hundreds of labyrinths for thousands of people. Over time, the patterns have changed from a classical uh, known set designs to what he refers to as dream fields. These are sprawling, meandering paths that cover a little more than an acre with a typical draw at about a half mile long. They do get much larger with sand, space, and inclination. He draws in the sand as it was left by the receding tide and moved by the wind, guided only by the experience he's had and listening to an inner guide for where to place the lines. I've personally experienced several of these incredible works of art. Each one is different. Each time is different exhilarating, connecting, enlightening, and sometimes profound. As a religious science practitioner since 2000, and now sand artist, Danny gently listens to those that line up to walk. His message is simple, yet profound. You are whole and complete just as you are. Those that come from around the world will hear, walk, and go away delighted, inspired, and better for experiencing it. 
Denny, thank you for spending your time with us tonight and sharing how you came to the sand and your message of intention and impermanence. Thank you, Sandra. I appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and share screen. And we'll go. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Sandra, for the introduction. And thank you to the Trinity Labyrinth Guild for inviting me today. I will be talking about my journey on the Sandy Path and how intention kept me on that path. Intention is defined simply as your purpose or goal you want to achieve, but intention is more than I want. It is the creative energy which allows transformation. I have learned that impermanence is what allows intention to become change. When the high tide recedes, it leaves behind a blank canvas, which I use to create ephemeral art in the form of meandering paths and labyrinths, which can be walked until the ocean returns. It is in this liminal space between high tides where all transformation takes place. The word liminal comes from the Latin word limen, meaning threshold, any point or place of entering or beginning. A liminal space is the time between the what was and the next is. It is the time when change actually is occurring. The sand I draw on is only exposed for several hours and creates the perfect location for a path dedicated to love and transformation. I moved to the Oregon coast of Oregon in 2000, but it wasn't until 2010 that I first started drawing on the sand. Little did I know then just how much my life was about to change. I learned how to read a tide table and would go down to the beach at low tides with my staff and practice drawing labyrinths. I have to admit there was a learning curve and not all of them turned out the way I expected. Sometimes I would intentionally draw them close to tide line and watch the tide come in and absorb the pattern. There is such a positive energy on the shoreline. The calming energy of the sound of the ocean and the fresh feeling of the air surrounds everything. I founded Circles in the Sand in 2011 as a special project of my labyrinth ministry with the intention of creating temporary labyrinths for everyone to be able to experience a walk on the sandy path. I drew hundreds of labyrinths over the next several years. I practiced drawing different patterns, starting with the classical labyrinths with different variations, and then some of the medieval or church patterns. I learned a lot about what it takes to draw in the sand. I was able to freehand all of the classical designs and used a marked cord to draw the more circular church patterns. Some days I would just walk along the beach leaving labyrinths behind me for people to discover on their own. I did find that the more traditional labyrinths where the walker goes to center and then returns to the entrance were confusing on the sand. Some folks just didn't understand the basic principle of walking a labyrinth and would feel lost or trapped when they reached center. This path requires walkers to walk in and out on the same path and even the experienced labyrinth walkers were hesitant to step over the line in the sand. So I started drawing more walk through labyrinths where the path continues through center to the exit. As I got more comfortable with drawing labyrinths, I started adding highlights to enhance the appearance of what was coming of my art form. My intention of sharing the path on the sand grew stronger some people would want to know more about labyrinths and we would talk about them for a while and they would take a walk and leave while others kept their distance sometimes probably wondering exactly what i was doing mm -hmm. i enjoyed teaching others how to create labyrinths especially the kids the local paper and social media 
started sharing photos of my work with theories about where they came from. One newspaper showed a photo of a 50-foot Santa Rosa labyrinth and suggested that maybe Bandon was a new location for crop circles. Social media raised the question of whether they were created by visiting aliens or just uncovered when the tide went out. Mm. For a long time, I think I was known as the old guy with the stick drawing circles in the sand. Mm -hmm. Today, I use a rake to create my artwork, but I guess I'm still the old guy with a rake drawing circles in the sand. I drew a lot in the summer of 2014. I even put out a printed flyer for a couple of the events. Some of the events were tended by dozens of people, a few by more than 50. But it was on September 28th of that summer that I had just completed the Baltic Wheel Labyrinth as the walk for the day, and I had moved up the beach to practice drawing double spirals. Soon I'd drawn seven separate spirals that formed a circle. So I then connected them together with a single path. From the entrance, the path went through the each spiral. And when exiting the last spiral, turned and went completely around the whole pattern to come out near the entrance. The finished pattern looked like a giant paint by number. So I took a small rake and groomed the space between the paths. It was like raking a Zen garden and the texture of the sand was enjoyable to work with. When it was completed, I took a walk and found the path to be filled with an energy that I could actually feel. I think two or three others walked the path before the tide returned. As I packed up to go back up to the viewpoint, I felt complete and content with the day's draw. When I arrived at the top and looked down, I was absolutely amazed at the pattern that had been completed. With the groomed sand providing the background, you could clearly see the single continuous path with no dead ends or wrong turns running through the sand. I had created my first dream field and was filled with the wonder of creation. I took a deep breath and knew in my heart that this was the manifestation of my intention to create labyrinths on the sand. I had found a pattern that would be the foundation for circles in the sand. And that was the day I became an artist. It was about this time that Travel Oregon wanted to do a photo layout of Circles in the Sand. They asked if I had a schedule out for 2015 so they could add it to the article. Of course, I said yes and quickly went home, created the schedule for the year of public events, and they posted it for me. That was the first year that I did a full year of public events on a schedule. My intention for creating labyrinths on the sand had taken a much more solid form. Circles in the sand officially went full time in January of 2015. Since then, over 300 dream fields have been completed and more than 40,000 pairs of feet have walked the sandy path. Although I have to admit some of those were four footed creatures there is no charge for events and everyone is welcome. We can accept online tax deductible donations to support our public work. Our summer season for 2021 starts April 30th and continues until August 25th with 32 draw days scheduled. This project started with me going to the beach and drawing labyrinths and or the new dream field. I have always used volunteers to help in grooming my artwork. I met Christine Mearing when she was a volunteer groomer. One, and one day when we had other groomers, I asked if she could do some artwork in the circles to accent the dream field. She hesitated, but said, sure. I found out later that like me, she had never considered herself an artist until she started drawing on the sand. Christine was the first sand artist for Circles in the Sand and is still creating from the heart for everyone to know they are loved. I do little planning regarding the design or shape of each day's draw. 
I have always allowed the energy of the ocean and the sand to guide me while I'm working. I do remember a point in time that I did ask myself if I could continue to do what I do without a blueprint or a sketch. So I went home, pulled out pencil and paper and tried to draw a labyrinth field. It just didn't work for me. It just didn't feel the same because I truly need the sand beneath my feet and the energy of the day to allow me to do what I do. I have been drawing for six years now, and I've always looked forward to every day on the sand. Every day is a new adventure in liminal space for me to express the intention of love through the path of the labyrinth. My response to the rest of the team when they ask, what is the plan for today is, I'm not exactly sure, but we're about to find out. We do set a general theme for the day, such as Zen, ocean, celestial, or hearts. But that's about all the prior planning that we do. Team circles for 2021 are myself as lead artist, Christine Mearing, sand artist, Beth Patrick, sand artist, James Ferrara, wingman, Jackie Ferrara, shell artist, June Davies, ambassador, Bear Sloth Hour, lead groomer, Kathy Upton, ambassador, James Upton, detailed groomer. This team is dedicated to the path of the labyrinth as a means of meditation and transformation, always created with the intention of love. Circles in the Sands public venues are at Face Rock Viewpoint in Bandon, Oregon. Although we do make an annual trip to Florence, Oregon in October for a sunset draw. During a public draw, I arrive at Face Rock Viewpoint in Bandon, Oregon, about two and a half hours before the scheduled walk time. From the viewpoint above, I can see the beaches and decide where is the best place to draw where the water has drained well enough, where it's clear. When I get down on the sand, the first thing that I do is stop and inhale and know that all is well. I will then pick the final area for the draw and start with the dedication circle, which includes a center circle for artwork and the name circles in the sand. I then draw a large outer ring that has chopsticks stuck around it for visitors to write their names or dedicate their walks to someone. Next, I draw the start of the entrance path and the end of the exit, which are side by side. About this time, the rest of the team is showing up and we all get together at the dedication circle for a small ceremony, offering this path to the highest good of everyone and knowing that it is created with the intention of love. We then go out and do what we do. I concentrate on the shape of the path and the location for artwork. It takes about an hour and a half to complete the basic drawing and looks like a really big paint by number etched in the sand when we're done. The sand and detail artists continue to work on their offering for the day while well, some of the ambassadors and lead groomers help 12 volunteer groomers in how to rake the sand, how to create the texture in between the artwork and the pathways. Keep in mind that our, we are grooming at least an acre of sand to finish up the artwork and grooming takes about an hour and we are normally done about the scheduled walk time. The tide will return in about two or three hours and slowly take the path out to sea. I am often asked how it feels when the tide erases my artwork, but I don't really have any emotional attachment nor need to preserve each draw. I admit that I do like the photographs that are taken though. There is something fulfilling knowing when I am done and the visitors have walked the path that the ocean will reclaim the sand. Before each walk, I have the opportunity to welcome everybody to the labyrinth. 
I normally start by reminding them to take a deep breath and know that all is well. Have them take another deep breath and inhale the sense of the ocean. Remind them where they are and just how perfect the day is. Circles in the Sand is dedicated to the path of the labyrinth as a means of meditation and transformation. The sandy path meanders through spirals and labyrinths in the pattern. There will be no wrong turns or dead ends, so just get comfortable and enjoy the walk. The outsides of the path have been carefully groomed by volunteers. All of the artwork and patterns in the groomed areas are created by teen circles as expressions of their love and joy for what we do. You will find the words, leave behind what is not needed, written next to the path with a circle so that you can leave behind whatever it is that you no longer need. There is nothing more freeing than being able to release something to the sand, knowing the tide will carry it back out to the ocean. Quietly walking the path is a form of meditation, which is simply taking a little time for yourself and being still within. Take a few deep, slow breaths and know that you are perfect, whole, and complete. Take another deep, slow breath, knowing that there is a place within you that is perfect and cannot be changed. Take another slow breath, knowing that there is a place within you, and it is the same spot that makes you whole and connected to the universe. With another deep breath, knowing it is this connection which makes you complete. So remember always that you are perfect, whole, and complete. Transformation is just a big word for change. Our journey is a path through life. On our journey, we need to move forward in the most positive way we can. And change is always needed to continue on that path. How do we create change? By using our intention. It is our intention which sets everything in motion to manifest our thoughts. What is your intention as you go about your daily activity? As you interact with other people, do you take the time to say a friendly word or smile to let someone know that they do matter and they are loved? My intention every day is to share as much love peace, joy, and harmony as I possibly can. That is an energy which will reflect back to me and manifest in my life. Remember, you are perfect, whole, and complete. I sometimes think it was the ocean calling me to draw on the sand. It was there that I found that liminal space that sacred space where intention is magnified. There is something about walking on sand that only a few hours ago was covered with the ocean waves and in a few more hours will be covered again. The constant changing of the ocean is a reminder of the impermanence of our own lives. My first intention when I started drawing on the sand was to create temporary labyrinths so that everyone could experience a walk on the sandy path. Soon, I added the intention to create all of my work with the intention of love, peace, joy, and harmony. With a dream field, we can now create themes with the artwork to enhance the walking experience. Since 2020, I have changed the path to a more meandering style labyrinth, which maintains safe physical distancing. I miss my spirals and labyrinths, but I have to admit the feeling of walking this new pattern is really comforting. And maybe that's what we all need right now. I missed the part of my opening talk where I and the circle team would go out into the crowd and get at least four hugs. I am looking forward to the time we can resume the ritual of a hug 
to show that we care. Today, my journey continues to unfold along the sandy path. And each day for us all to experience and enjoy the loving energy that surrounds this planet and be one with it. Love is the source of all good. I and the circle team create these paths of transformational energy to promote the intention of love. I know that as the tide reclaims the sand, that all of the energy created by team circles, guest groomers, and all of the people who walked that day is carried out to the ocean as a wave of love and is spread around the world. I have learned about the importance of holding the best intentions for myself and everyone who walks the labyrinth. All thought is creative and will manifest in our lives. I have learned to live with intention and not be attached to the outcome. It is easy to forget that it's not the outcome that creates our intentions, but it is our intention that creates the flow of energy in our lives. I have learned that change in itself is impermanent and occurs in direct correlation to one's intentions. The one consistent thing about change is that it will change again. I accept and expect only the highest good for myself and all others. I am proud to say that my intention today is to continue to spread as much love, joy, peace, and harmony through the expression of drawing temporary labyrinths on the sand. I continue to use labyrinth as a personal meditation tool. It is a single path with no wrong turns or dead ends. It is a path that opens to unlimited possibilities. In closing, I would like to remind you that you are perfect, whole, and complete. Remind yourself of this frequently until you accept it as your truth. Walk your path with the intention of love and see how much brighter your future will be. See you on the sand. Thank you, Danny. You're most welcome. We'll take some um, questions after the meditation. So if you have a candle to light, now would be the time to do that. Candle helps us focus. It's also one of the four elements that make up our world. Sand, wind, fire, water. Also, if you had some sand available, um, you might want to find that. And even if you don't have sand, if you take your shoes off and your socks. And while they're on the floor during this meditation, see if you don't find yourself with your feet in the sand. If not actually, then at least in your imagination. And if you have some sand to sprinkle on the labyrinth that you'll be walking, do that as well. We want to use all of our senses. We'll have a time with some images and then a time of silence. And when we return from the journey, we'll have a little time to share our thoughts and experiences. 
after which Danny will answer any questions you might have about his presentation. And so now with a deep breath, become fully present here in your seat in this space and time. Another breath, a full lung of sea air. Accept the energy of expectation as we start the process and the procession in silence. Draw inward, aware and expectant of what is to come. A breath, a step, as we move down a path of our usual lives through the forest of thoughts and actions of our day to a place less cluttered, the path well marked a mind and body at rest. We walk, noticing ahead the transitional space where the earth meets the water and the sky with the fire of the sun above. We are arriving. In your arriving, breathe in the expansiveness and see the openness, the availability, and the welcome. The ocean lapping at the sand and it, its return on the tide ever closer, caressing the sand, moving in its aliveness, reclaiming the canvas on which it paints. The meeting of the earth and the sand and the expressive energy of the rocks as earth and the wind as air and the salty ocean as water, the warmth of the sun as fire. As the waves take away and rearrange, so we know it also brings back gifts. What is the gift that you might find? tonight. Before our arrival, preparations were made. We are expected in love and in welcoming. Arriving at the entry, stepping through and onto an unknown path never walked before, what is it you will find? Choosing a stone to dream upon, feel its smooth, cool weight in the palm of your hand. What is it saying? Are you listening? Arriving at the entry, stepping barefoot into the experience, free yourself, leave behind what isn't necessary, travel lightly. Step in thankfulness for whatever may come. As you enter, envision your heart and the middle of your forehead as flowers, a rose or perhaps a lotus. They may now be mud, buds that will open as you walk. Perhaps they're already fully open, ready for whatever is. Now stepping forward, placing one foot in front of the other on this journey. The path opens as you take each step, it twists and turns and moves. Your bare feet feel the coarseness of the sand, the chill of the damp where water so recently covered the sand underfoot. 
Each tiny grain of sand is shifting, malleable earth, never exactly the same. Always, perhaps, imperceptibly different. Different than the moment before. Shaped by the wind and the movement of the ocean. Like the sand, we are being moved and shaped. Spirit rearranging us. Nothing ever exactly the same. Change the only constant. The ocean purrs and splashes in your ears. Your muscles respond by relaxing. You open. The waves correspond to our heartbeats as the blood pulses through our veins, bringing the fresh air collected from our lungs out to every part of our body. The moisture in the air comes in with each breath. With each step, it becomes a part of us. Feel the movement of the air, the wind now calm, yet the great potential, the great strength of the wind. It blows around you with a crisp, invigorating message. All is temporary. The sand on the shore, the water of the sea, the temperament of the wind. The wind whispers in sounds of the surf. Be now in this moment. Another step in the next and the soles of your feet on the sand, the wind playing in the hair the water as it creeps to the edges of the path. All we truly have is the moment, this moment. It soon will be gone. In this moment, one foot in front of the other on the path as the flower of your heart and head comes fully open. What do you know? Is there a word, a phrase, a vision, a person? Whatever rises as you place one foot in front of the other. Is there a personal intention to carry into this new year? As we walk now in silence on this path, a meander with no center, the sand, the ocean, the wind with our hands and our hearts and our minds open, being in this moment.
soon, soon you will come to the exit, but not quite yet. The waves are still whispering. The wind is still rustling your hair. The chill of the sand. All your senses in focus. One foot in front of the other. No concern about where you are or where you're going. All as well. Ahead, you see the path, the exit. In some way, you've been changed. Slowly, you reach the point that spills the path onto the open beach. And when you reach it, you pause. With your hands out in praise and into your heart, Slowly turn. Thank the path, the wind, the sand, the ocean, the rocks, the small stone in your hand for the experience that you've had. For this moment, as the waves break, moving ever closer to take the path and move the sand. Know that it is not erasing, but it is enfolding enfolding us, enfolding the intention, enfolding the love, and taking it to see. Look around and see what the gifts of the sea have been, the treasures that rearranged the space, ever new, as we are new. The images in the sand stay with us. What we've experienced, what we've felt, 
what we might now understand. Yet we have also left in the sand a bit of our own essence. It was left with every footstep, with every intention. Collectively, we are taken that essence we left by the ocean along with the meander, mingling with all the waters of the world, cleansed, forgiven, enhanced, and our caring and calm deposited in other places by the wind and the sand. The water is shared in the world. It is all one body of water. It is all one world. And we are one. We've been blessed and we have blessed. As we leave, looking back into our lives, changed slightly, rearranged, with our gift from the sea, the sand, and the wind. Let us go in great gratitude. May we understand the beauty of the world and the gift of opening the flower in our heart and head to what is already there. Guidance, love, and understanding. When you're ready, you can turn back on your cameras, your microphones. And we'll take a few, um, a few people if anyone wants to share their experience. Um, the slide that's up now is um, how you can contact Denny. Um, his website and Facebook page, which will also be in the chat. Would anyone like to share? I guess I would. Are you hearing me? Oh. Yes. Okay. Well, I just, I, I just can't resist telling you a little bit more of this story about finding the float and the golden ball on the beach because I took a spiritual retreat looking for a, a spiritual path and it led me to so many wonderful things and there was a dance done on a golden ball with the golden ball on a labyrinth in the middle ages and so dancing on the labyrinth has been part of this great history and the circle and the golden ball and, and the labyrinth and the sea just have so much meaning. So I'm, I'm very grateful for my golden ball, which really changed my life. So that was your gift from the sea. Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Put a, you can put something in the chat or, or raise your hand. I'd like to say, just say thank you, and I, that was a powerful meditation for me. This is, is this Kathy? Yes. Yeah. Thank so, you. Kathy. Yeah, thank you, Sandra, and thank you, Denny. Yes. <laughs> Does anybody else have a um, find something? Did you find something in the journey on the beach? I, 
I found a very deep longing to get back to the beach. <laughs> I, I, I'm a regular, I'm a regular beach person and the, to, all, with all the pandemic stuff, I haven't been able to do it. So I look forward to being there and I just deeply appreciated the, the description of the air and the beach and the sand and all those things that you did for us. So it was a very, a very warm and fulfilling walk.